Hi, my name is Fabian, and in the previous video, I shared my ancestry DNA results with you guys and said I was going to be making future videos to give you guys some tips and hints to help you expand your tree, especially if you're doing research in Mexico. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. As of today, I reviewed thousands and thousands of documents and added a little over 18,300 people, and maybe considered somewhat of a genealogy net. And I believe I've gained enough experience and useful hints along the way that are hopefully um, beneficial to you. And I'm gonna be sharing some of those tips today. And I would consider these tips to be a little bit basic, maybe beginner techniques. And as I make future videos, I'll get into more in-depth techniques along the way. The three tips I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today is the first one is avoid accent marks and tildes. The second one, avoid dual last names. And the third one is to avoid the first names, Jose and Maria. And I'll get into more detail on each one of those a little bit later. And the, the second two may be really considered like personal preference, but I think they could be a little bit beneficial to you as well. So the first one, avoiding accent marks and tildes. Tildes are the little ends, I mean the little squiggly lines over the ends that give the word the ña sound. For example, España, you don't say Espana. Or the word niño, you don't say nino. And niño is... Um, the Spanish word for child or kid. And tildes are a type of accent marks. So I just may say accent marks and as I continue or use them both, um, just so you, you're aware. So when I was doing my tree on Ancestry.com, I would add some names with accent marks or even accept some hints from Ancestry that included the accent marks over the names. But... As time went on I, and I had a lot more people on my tree, I was looking for individuals who I thought, on my, who I, thought I had on my tree but weren't showing up as part of the, res, um, the search result. And then I realized it's because I didn't include the accent marks when I was searching for the names. And as of now, Ancestry.com doesn't have an option for you just to search for the name. And it would also give you options of names that, have, um, that include the accent marks. Then I found it very um, unproductive of my time to try to remember which names had accent marks and which ones didn't. And I'm a fluent Spanish speaker. I can read and write it as well. And I don't always know where the accent marks and tildes fall. So I don't expect a lot of the people who I'm trying to make these videos for, for especially for Mexican Americans who live in the States or just for uh, other Americans or other people around the world who Spanish may not be their first language, and even if it is, try to remember try to remember where all these accent marks fall. So I removed all those accent marks away from my tree, so it could, it's easier for me to go back on my tree and search for people. Let me give you an example of what I mean, because I can't do it on my tree now since I don't have any on there. But I'm going to be showing you guys some public trees I found on Ancestry. And if this is your tree, please, I'm not trying to embarrass you or say that you're doing it wrong. I'm just trying to use it for research purposes and I'll make sure I blur out your name so people um, don't come after you or come after me. I'm sure they're gonna come after me, but just to give you some idea of how this works. So I'm gonna click on this individual's tree and let's say this individual and I were related and I wanted to go on his tree and see if we had some common ancestors, especially if I was doing research on someone who I reached a dead end on and see if I can expand on that a little bit. So I go on his tree and I'm looking for an individual by the name of Jose Maria Chavez. I get two hits and I look at each one of these individuals and realize that that's not who I was looking for. And I could have probably gave up and be like, okay, that individual didn't have the person I was looking for and move on. But if I would have typed the Jose Maria with the accent marks, Jose Maria Chavez, I would get four additional hits. And what if this person here was the individual I was looking for and I missed out on him because I did not include those accent marks. So that's where I believe they're not beneficial to include them on there, especially right now when Ancestry doesn't have an option or a filter for you to look for both names with accents or without accents as you're typing them in the research field. So that's my first tip, avoid including the accent marks. And the next two tips, maybe consider personal preference. Actually, I know their personal preference. 
And the second tip was to avoid dual last names. And what I mean by dual last names is, for example, my name is Fabian Mondragon Lombera. Mondragon was my dad's last name and Lombero was my mom's last name. And it's custom to, to take both last names in Mexico, maybe in other Latin American countries as well. And it was difficult growing up in the States trying to explain that to people, especially like at school, the, the teachers always thought Mondragon was my middle name and Lombero was my last name. And I had to keep explaining, explaining that to them. And even when I got my ID, until I told the person who was working there, it's like, I said, no, it's almost like a hyphenated um, last name in the States. That's how it works. And many, many of you have probably been in the same boat as I am. So when I started doing my tree, similarly, like with the accent marks, I was including both last names on my name, my parents' names, my grandparents' names, and, and so on and so forth. But then I found out that it wasn't really adding value to my tree because I knew that if I didn't need both names, I just, it was more helpful for me, especially at a glance, to look at my tree and see the paternal last name. And you can include both last names on the person's profile as an alternative name. So you didn't need to have this long name on your tree. So I decided to remove all my dual last names from my tree as well, with an exception. And I'll give you guys an example of that in a little bit. So let me show you what it looks like to have dual last names and why I believe it's not beneficial. So here's another tree from another public tree on Ancestry.com. And here you can see this individual here, Maria Josefa Hernandez Hernandez. Both of her parents happen to be Hernandez. So she took Hernandez from her father and the other Hernandez from her mother. And if you go on to her father's side, his name is Jose Hernandez Garcia. He took Hernandez from his father's side and Garcia from his mother's side and so on and so forth. That's how it continues. But like I said, I don't think it adds any value there to have both of them on there, especially if you can add them as an alternative name in their profile. Where I do think it has value, and what I said there was an exception is, for example, here on my tree, this is my uh, great-grandfather, Maximo Mondragon, and his mother was Dolores Arellano, and then her mother was Brigida Prado Espinosa. Here I kept both last names because I don't know who her parents are yet. But this is where I feel it has value because if I found a couple in this town around the same time period and they had a daughter named Brigida and the couple, the, the male was Prado and the female was Espinosa, then I had strong confidence that those would be the parents of Brigida. That's where I would keep the dual last names because here I do believe it adds value. And the other ones, I don't think it adds anything to it, so I took all the dual last names. So that's my second tip. And similarly to that is my third tip, which is avoid the first names Jose and Maria. Mexican culture was strongly influenced by the Catholic Church. Even to de till today, it's very strongly influenced by, by the, the Catholic Church. And the majority of female names start with Maria, and the majority of male names start with Jose. And similarly to the dual last names, I don't think they add any value, especially when everybody's going to be Jose if you're male and everybody's going to be Maria if you're female. So let's go back to the tree that had the dual last names. So here you will see almost every female on here, her first name is Maria. Even these that you can't really see until you click on them, their first name is Maria. And same thing with Jose's. Almost everyone on here that's male has Jose. I do have some exceptions for this role as well, and I'll share those with you in a little bit. So now if we were to look at this name, Maria Josefa Hernandez Hernandez, and by those two tips that I just shared with you guys, if we would remove Maria and Hernandez from here, it would be so simple to read. You'll just see Josefa Hernandez. But you could keep Maria Josefa Hernandez Hernandez as an alternative name in the profile if you wanted to for research purposes or just to be accurate. But it, it doesn't add any value to keep them all on here. And it would just be more simple, to, if you're, especially at a glance, if you're looking for someone, you wouldn't have to click on them. Even this one here, Jose de Jesus Hernandez Garcia. 
you can't see the full name just because the name is so long with unnecessary information, I would say. Okay, so the exceptions to this rule. I would keep Jose if it was the first name with no middle name followed by a last name. If, if it was just Jose, then I would keep it. Or if the second name or the middle name was feminine or unisex, gender neutral, whatever, then I would keep Jose there because then it does add value because then you know that that individual is male. So it would be Jose Hertrudis. And Hertrudis can be feminine or, or masculine, usually feminine. It's, it's a um, female name. But then it would add value there. Or if Jose was the middle name. So if it was Juan Jose, then I would keep Jose there. And the same thing with Maria that follow the same roles. So that's where I would keep Jose or Maria. If it's just the first name, then I just get rid of it altogether. And I, like I said, I know those two last two tips were personal preference, but I do think they add some value and they can be considered a little beneficial if you're working on your tree on ancestry.com. So those are my tips for today. And just to recap, it was avoid accent marks and tildes, avoid dual last names, and avoid the first names Jose and Maria. And I hope this helped you guys, some of you guys out. And if you have some tips for me too, please share them. I would like to hear them and see them, read them, what have you, because I love this stuff and you guys probably love this stuff. That's why you're seeing this video. And if you have like a aunt or cousins who are working on this tree with you to, um, together, um, share this video with them. Maybe you'll help them out as well. And that's it for today.